Hello, Bio20. We're going to get started on the next part in our journey of the respiration system. Today, we are going to be learning about the role that your muscles play when breathing and the different ways that breathing can be measured. Now, we're going to start today by explaining the difference between inspiration and expiration, identify the role of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, um, as well as eventually we will be identifying the respiratory graph and how to measure air, uh, volume of air in your lungs. We are on page five of your notes, so let's get started. So the two main requirements for respiration uh, are the following. So it says here, what are the two main, and you need to have a large surface area and water for a moist environment. So water and a moist environment are split up, but really they are one and the same. So when we're talking about breathing, your lungs actually have masses amounts of massive amount of surface area. Now, as the organ itself, it doesn't look that big. But if you think about how tiny the alveoli are and how small they are and how each individual alveoli has its own surface area, then you get to realize, oh my goodness, the lungs are huge, okay? So the alveoli specifically are small, circular, round. They almost look like grapes, I would say, but at a really small, tiny scale. They're very small and circular, and then things diffuse across their membrane all around them. So they create a large amount of surface area. In order for us to be able to diffuse things back and forth, we also need a moist environment for the dissolving of the gases, so for oxygen and carbon dioxide, to diffuse and travel within your bloodstream. So water does become important, and that moist environment becomes important for transferring gases between the alveoli and the bloodstream. So when it comes to the stages of breathing, we have a couple different stages. So the first one is breathing in or inspiration and then expiration, which is breathing in and breathing out. All right. Now, the thing with these beautiful words is that a lot of these starts with I's and E's and you need to know the difference. So inspiration means that you're breathing in. Expiration means you're breathing to exit your body. But then there's also external and internal respiration. And there's always mistakes made between inspiration, internal and external and expiration. There's really no great way to remember it other than external respiration happens in your lungs and internal respiration happens internally in your body. So breathing in is not the same as internal respiration. So let's talk about the difference. So external respiration is when your lungs and your blood exchange gases. So it's across that membrane between the alveoli and your bloodstream, oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse across. Internal respiration is when you're taking the oxygen that is now circulating through your blood and passing it to your body's tissues, such as the muscles. And once the muscles get it, then there's cellular respiration, which is essentially the building and making of ATP. It's important again, like I said, to remember that inspiration and expiration are not the same as external and internal. So you might wanna make yourself a little note about that. We're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about internal and external respiration. So this is kind of what the textbook shows you it looks like. And I have asked you to draw on your notes, please draw the following diagrams. These are not very good diagrams to draw. So I, I made my own. Um, welcome to our class 101 with Mrs. Posick. These are not very good. This was done with my lovely mouse and I drew it out here for you. So what you're gonna see here is I'm pretending these are my alveoli. So when you draw in your notes, these are your alveoli. So sorry for the really bad drawing here. So this is representing the alveoli in the lung. So what you're seeing here is oxygen is in the lungs and it's being diffused across into the body or into the blood. So that lovely little black line is the capillary. Oh, that doesn't want to stay. Okay. Oh, no. What is happening? It's disappearing on me. Oh, I have the disappearing pen. Sorry, guys. That was really crazy. I apologize for that. So that's what you're seeing there. So this is the alveoli. This is the bloodstream. And this is CO2 in your bloodstream. CO2 is going to enter into the alveoli and then leave via the lungs. So that's external respiration. Internal respiration now looks at the blood and some body tissue. I chose a muscle. That's a really bad picture of a muscle, but that's what I drew. So what you have there is 
um, is this muscle has carbon dioxide hanging out in it because we know that when we do cellular respiration, we make carbon dioxide and it's gotta go into the blood to diffuse out to the lung. The oxygen has to come in to the muscle. So this is what we refer to as internal respiration, okay? So this is happening inside the body. This one's happening in the lungs. So you can draw those two diagrams in your notes. Uh, maybe you wanna make yours look a little nicer than mine. Uh, but that's just the idea of the two types. So let's go into a little bit more detail about what's actually happening. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of detail, but I'm going to explain to you the importance of what I'm saying. So again, keep in mind that there's a lot of information here, but let's just break it down to the meat and potatoes. So external respiration takes place in the lungs. So again, alveoli and capillaries are diffusing gases. This is easy diffusion high to low concentrations, okay? There's lots of oxygen in the lungs, so it's gonna diffuse from high concentrations to low concentrations in our blood. So as it moves out of the alveoli into the blood, that makes up about 70% of the blood, uh, sorry, oxygen that diffuses through, okay? Now, approximately 30% of oxygen then has to use facilitated diffusion. Because okay? if you think about it, if 70% moves into your blood, well, all of a sudden you're like, well, that's now a high concentration. So the rest of it doesn't really want to diffuse across. So it needs a little bit of help by channels opening up so that it can move across. So the blood in the capillaries has a higher concentration of carbon dioxide because it's returning to uh, the lungs from the body. So the carbon dioxide diffuses into the alveoli from the capillaries and then we exhale it. So that is essentially what is happening in external respiration. In internal respiration, there's a little something different. So the body tissues and the blood, okay, um, we use something called hemoglobin to help circulate oxygen around your body. So hemoglobin is a tiny protein found on your red blood cells, and it's actually responsible for making your blood red. So it's made out of a protein that has iron in it. And so if you think of rusting, when something rusts, that's iron, it turns like that reddish color, okay? That's what hemoglobin is. It's got some iron and protein. And if you think about it, if you've ever tasted blood, it has that like tangy, irony taste, and that's from your hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is found on your little red blood cells, okay? And it carries oxygen and transports it all around your body, okay? So hemoglobin is a really important thing. In fact, people who are anemic, okay, or they lack the iron in their blood, actually lack hemoglobin. So they're so tired all the time because their body is not getting oxygen to all the vital organs that they have. Hence, less cellular respiration, less energy, you're tired. So hemoglobin, huge deal, okay? Now, there's a little bit of a problem, though, is that hemoglobin, it says here, approximately 99% of the oxygen reaches the cells through hemoglobin. Hemoglobin though is most is mostly for oxygen. But what about when we're trying to get rid of carbon dioxide? Now this is where we have to keep it in balance. So about 23% of your carbon dioxide is carried in your blood by hemoglobin. So hemoglobin will actually uptake a little bit of carbon dioxide because it has a little oxygen on there. Okay. The rest is carried in blood plasma, which we're gonna learn about plasma. It's essentially just the liquidy part of your blood. And the rest is dissolved and either made as a bicarbonate ion or a carbonic acid. Now, if you remember back in the last chapter, I showed you external, I showed you that carbon dioxide is actually being made in cellular respiration because they blew into a Erlenmeyer flask and I changed the acidity, I went from basic to acidic, of a couple different things, okay? Your body does the same thing. When your carbon dioxide gets mixed into your blood, it has to create a neutral pH. You don't want acidic blood and you don't want super basic blood, otherwise it would pretty much wreck all the vessels in your body. So what ends up happening is your body dissolves it as either a bicarbonate, which is a base, or a carbonic acid, which is an acid, and they balance each other out. And then as they get to the lungs, the carbon dioxide diffuses across and you're left with water. Because if you see, you have HCO3 and H2CO3. So you're left over with some water, okay? 
And again, when the carbon dioxide reaches the alveolite, it is then diffused across and exhaled. So on of all of this, essentially what you need to understand, guys, is A, hemoglobin, huge deal. We need it. It's important. It transports all the oxygen around our body. The second thing you need to understand is that carbon dioxide can't transport on hemoglobin, so the body has to come up with some sort of homeostatic way to deal with it, meaning a balance. Homeostasis means balance. So that just means creating both an acid and a base to create a neutral pH. So that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know.